Okay, um, just to talk about pain and unconscious guilt in the body. Well, you could say there is a there is the guilt of um, the guilt of separation from God for choosing duality, and one of the biggest symbols of um, of uh, of how the ego, uh, how the separation manifests, um, uh, is the body, uh, either. Um, you know, which is the symbol of um, if you identify with the with uh, the body as being you, then other bodies become real. So, um, so the primary thing is to identify with the body or the thoughts or both. Well, it's both actually. But uh, if you didn't identify with the body, then you wouldn't have to suffer all the pain, the fear of loss of money, loss of health, old aging, and death because that's all projected onto the body as it symbolizes separation. Um, so the guilt the guilt is, you know, part of the aspect of um, the separation is having a body. Because if you didn't have a body, you wouldn't be afraid of death. Uh, you wouldn't be afraid of um, loss of money, loss of health. You couldn't have ailments in the body, pain or anything like that. So uh, to identify with the body is a form of the... Um, the expression of the guilt of of abandoning God, for um, and rejecting God for duality, uh, and 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 that has incarnated as the physical body. Of course, being in the physical body and having individualized, personalized thoughts, one can then uh, project the illusory idea that other bodies are real and my body is real, and there's the world of the collective separation. Uh, and I can indulge in all the projections, attack myself or attack others. So um, one of the great things, of course, is as the the guilt, as the repressed feelings, um, and as one gets further away from God and more into mentalization and more into body identification, then you could say the guilt is increasing and the symbols of separation, pain, suffering, hell, torment, being feeling that one's own body and thoughts are tormenting oneself and other bodies uh, and, their, and their thoughts and actions are tormenting one. So one goes into uh, seemingly the, uh, the darker levels of hell. Now, um, so what, what, what's the way out of that? Well, you know, um, I would just, you know, I, I, Dr. Hawkins is my teacher. I mean, he does advocate doing everything one can, both on the physical, emotional, and spiritual levels, to get relief. Uh, so um, sometimes that might include, um, if there's pain in the body, you know, getting medical help, um, psychiatric help, and also doing the spiritual at the same time, you know, whatever it is that will help one. And then um, to have the headspace, if you like, to do the spiritual work, to let go and get acceptance. But the, the miraculous can also operate through the medical and psychiatric um, system, antidepressants, um, uh, surgery, uh, medicine. So, but speaking more, on, uh, speaking from the, the, the spiritual angle, you know, one of the things with uh, pain in the body, one of the, some of the things that helped me with pain in the body is to sort of understand there is a such thing as uh, karma. You know, as Buddha spoke about that and um, Krishna spoke about karma. And also, if you check when Jesus talked about, um, who was it? Um, anyway, he said uh, something like, I don't know, John has come back as, as something in the Bible, and that calibrates as Jesus talking about reincarnation. So a lot of the high teachers, even though some of them didn't talk about reincarnation, are aware of it. Um, and um, so... You know, what if I, what if I, in a past lifetime, um, I, um, you know, I stabbed someone and they had to live the rest of their life in pain? You know, how would I undo that in this lifetime? You know, uh, probably need to do the anti karma prayer a lot. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's left others in non stop physical agony and pain uh, for the duration of their lives in past lifetimes. I pray for forgiveness for the one because that would create a guilt in me that I'd done that to my fellow brother 
uh, and I might choose to try and pay that that guilt off through suffering, you know, th thinking that I need to suffer that pain in this lifetime to make it to make to atone for what I've done to someone else in the in the previous lifetime. So I might do the anti karma prayer vigorously. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me um, who's in pain. Pray for forgiveness for one in me. Uh, you know, God is loving, which I forgive myself for inflicting pain on others uh in this lifetime and others um you know i can also look at um yeah i can just pray for a miracle pray for god uh pray to the holy spirit that the holy spirit reveal what is the meaning the spiritual lesson i need to learn uh from the pain that i'm suffering it can sometimes have a meaning sometimes these pains are symbolic like if i've got a pain in the neck maybe you know there's someone or I feel that someone is a pain in the neck, you know, maybe I need to forgive them for being a pain in the neck because I'm symbolizing it and having a pain in my neck. Or maybe I've been a pain in the neck to others. So I need to just pray for forgiveness for one me who's been a pain in the neck to others in this lifetime and others. You know, every every time people see me, they just feel like I'm a pain in the neck. You know, so some of these are, are symbolically, um, um, have symbolic meaning as to why. Why do I get a pain in the neck as opposed to a pain in the back? You know, they often say symbolically a pain in the back is um, a, a, to do with support. You know, have I been really careless in not supporting others uh, when they've been in need? And now I'm full of back pain, feeling unsupported. Uh, and maybe that's what I feel I need to suffer. Uh, you know, the guilt, you know, I need to suffer because I have never supported others. And uh, maybe I should feel and now get a taste of my own medicine and feel what it's like not to be supported. So there's a lots of um, spiritual stuff that can be done as to the symbolic meaning of pain, um, and uh, lots of practical things I can do. Uh, so I'd, I would look at it. You know, the the course is often a course. You know, what is it? You know, where is the attack? Well, and where is the forgiveness? Or where is the surrender? And surrender, of course, is if I've got uh, programs of wanting to control the pain or to try and control something and, or to not want it is to resist. To control and not want something is to resist it. And things tend to persist when you resist. So if you say, I don't want pain, I don't want pain, I'm going to try and control this pain, it tends to, it tends to stick around longer. Um, when I sort of say, right, well, I'll accept the pain, I won't try and control it. Or argue with it but just let it be there and I, I don't know why it's there but I'm just going to allow it to be there and if it get and if it kills me fine I'll let it kill let it let it let it be so I will not fight or resist it so you surrender you see and uh, my experience is um, uh, uh, you know the mystical thing with spiritual work is when you can surrender they disappear uh, but sometimes it can seem like you're trying to surrender and it's not going and then you just have to accept it's not going you see sometimes you surrender and it disappears in a split second sometimes you try and surrender and it doesn't work so you just let it be there okay it's not going to work so i'm just going to let it be there because you know i'm trying to surrender it and it's still there so maybe it's got is you know sometimes you've got to i mean hawkins talked about some things you have to undo you're not going to get away with a clever spiritual trick you know it's, it's going to take the course it's going to take and then you just got to let go. Well, maybe this one hasn't got any, you know, clever spiritual tricks around it. It just takes as long as it's going to take. And that there can be reasons for that. You know, uh, if you look into a past life, um, you know, um, often when you get the chance to look into your past lives, I mean, you don't have to. You can do muscle testing or see uh, a, a past life hypnotherapist. Um, sometimes, you know, the enlightened teachers, you know, because they dissolve the ego so much, they often get flashbacks and can see their past lives. Um, so they don't even have, need to go to a hypnotherapist or even uh, or do a kinesiologist. They can just, because their ego is so um, reduced. So that can sometimes be very helpful. Oh, yeah. I see that in a past lifetime. I was Genghis Khan and I just loved smashing people's backs in. And I, I've, I've, I, I smashed about 300 guys. So I see why it's not going away. My back pain is not, and the guilt is not allowing me to get rid of it very quickly. So you can sort of see that type of stuff. 
um i've had muscle testing done um and you know i was um you know financially in my past lifetimes i've behaved very badly and in this lifetime financially and i get a lot of stuff with people and finances um so it's not by chance that uh, this stuff so the guilt you pray for forgiveness and try and pray to the holy spirit to reveal the meaning or you can just guess whatever you've got maybe you've inflicted on others in some way not maybe not literally but symbolically in some way uh, whether it's you you've burned others you've caused pain to others um you've disabled others um so you can look at that and the anti karma crap okay then uh